New Year's honours for two T1D advocates. The pocket size device, which could be used to detect the early signs of diabetes, and a cancer drug reverses type 1 in a teenager. All of that and more coming up in today's video. Hello, my name's Jamie Lowe and welcome to the first T1D News Update of 2021. And if you've never seen one of these before, then this is a series where I bring you all of the biggest news in the Type 1 world each and every month. We look at research breakthroughs, new technology, and highlight some incredible people in our community. Now, there were loads and loads, and I mean loads, of breakthroughs in research in 2020, believe it or not. And in a recent video, I break them all down for you. And there's quite a few, and some of them quite exciting. So do go and check that out if you are interested. But let's get on with the new news today. And we begin today with the news that two huge names in the Type 1 world have been recognised in this year's New Year's Honour List. Professor Partha Carr has been awarded an OBE for services to people with diabetes. Now, if you didn't already know, he is a National Specialty Advisor for Diabetes with NHS England, as well as working as a consultant. And he's been instrumental in several campaigns, including the Freestyle Libra being available on the NHS, the Diabetes Language Matters campaign, and and the availability of a CGM to all pregnant people with diabetes. Professor Partha Carr has been a consultant in diabetes and endocrinology at Portsmouth Hospital's NHS Trust since 2008. He was the clinical director of diabetes from 2009 to 2015, being part of a multiple national award-winning department due to its services and care provided. He is the pioneer of the Super 6 diabetes model, which aims to deliver diabetes care differently and is recognised as one of the good examples of integrated care. So congratulations to Partha Carr. You've seen him on my podcast and YouTube channel before and I couldn't be more proud, just like everyone else in the T1D community here in the UK and abroad. Also, actress and JDRF ambassador Nina Wadia has received an OBE in the New Year's Honours list for her services to charity and entertainment. Actor Nina is well known for her roles in EastEnders, still open all hours, and goodness gracious me, and she's actually filming for a brand new Steve Merchant series in Bristol right now, so I'm hoping to catch up with her when she obviously has time and COVID restrictions permit. What can you do? Um, she has also been a huge huge supporter of JDRF since her son Aidan was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in 2017 when he was 10 years old. Recently, Nina published a book in 2019 to support children with type 1 diabetes called Bionic T1D. The book empowers children who are facing the challenges of managing type 1 and helps them to get to grips with the type 1 technology such as insulin pumps and continuous glucose monitors. As well as supporting the Type 1 community, Nina has given invaluable support to JDRF. She generously donated her winnings from Celebrity Catchphrase, a personal favourite of mine, and a Celebrity Tipping Point, which I think again is filmed in Bristol, to uh, JDRF. So all of that cash from those shows went straight to JDRF. And in 2019, she presented a BBC fundraising appeal on JDRF's behalf. She's also given her valuable time by hosting online events to celebrate the groundbreaking launch of the artificial pancreas and that is fantastic news isn't it um, to see two you know pillars of the community celebrated in such a way and very deserving of it they both are so congratulations to Nina and Partha myself and many others are very very proud of you Next today, a newly developed sensor will help form a breathalyzer that will be able to detect early warning signs of chronic illnesses like diabetes and cancer. The highly sensitive sensor has been created from a material called nanoparticle scaffold, which is thousands of times smaller than a human hair. A prototype of the device, which will look similar to the technology police use to detect drunk drivers, is being created. At the moment, blood tests are used to determine whether there are any signs of disease but these biomarkers can also be found in a person's breath but at a much lower concentration. Current lab analysis is expensive and involves using you know, quite elaborate equipment, which is why Nottingham Trent University and the Australian National University wanted to find a way to speed up the procedures and make them cheaper. 
Dr. Mohsen Romani, a Royal Society Wolfenson Fellow at Nottingham Trent said, the good thing about breath is that it's full of biomarkers that could help us detect chronic illness, but their concentration is so little in gaseous environments. The problem up to now has been the lack of reliable detectors. His new material, however, would be able to detect a low concentration of biomarkers freely moving within gaseous environments. So the sensing material will not need batteries, wires, or large and expensive lab equipment. And it's hoped that once this device has been developed and has been tested to ensure that it works effectively, it could be used to help detect the signs of disease so early interventions could be introduced. Now then, uh, a little personal news about me. Um, I, I, you'll know all about it if you've heard my podcast, the latest episode of it. But I am a sort of, sort of jobless right now. I was going to say short of jobless. I'm definitely short of a job um, right now. And if you've been on my channel or a follower for a while, you know that ever since I left university, I was a presenter and a news reporter for a company who I worked my backside off. Um, and uh, they sort of did me dirty recently after working me to the bone throughout the pandemic. Um, I get into all of the gory details in one of my recent podcast episodes. So there'll be a link to that in my bio or somewhere in my um, description for this video. There'll be a link wherever you're watching this. So what I'm doing is I'm giving this a go. This is what I love to do, this is what I feel fantastic doing, and this is almost my purpose in life. I want to make more frequent and better quality diabetes-related content. You know, it's always gonna remain free for the people that need it and want to enjoy it, but up until now, I haven't um, requested any so sort of support, and you know, it, it's not gonna be a thing which stops you accessing my content. There's never gonna be a paywall. But if you did want to support me and help me create content like this and better, more frequent content like this, then you could go to patreon.com forward slash Jamie Low TV. And for as little as one pound a month, you can get access to exclusive content and be in direct daily communication with me. And if you fancy supporting in a different way, then you can purchase a product. So I'm making these little diabetes accessory bags. Um, if, if they're produced and everything's fine with them, and I'll, I'll insert a picture or a video of them here. Um, so I'm doing that, that's my own sort of enterprise. But also, um, you know, it, it costs a bit of money to get product and sometimes product doesn't necessarily go as you planned. So there is also a Spreadshirt shop. So that's shop.spreadshirt.co.uk forward slash broken dash pancreas dash gang, which is sort of my little TikTok community. Um, and there you can get your hands on t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, and loads of other products with T1D designs, pretty cute T1D designs that I made myself. And this is uh, my funny little freestyle Libra design. It's my favorite right now. So if you fancy helping me to make more and better content, then I would be eternally grateful. And there's always, there's um, also a, a bit of a discount on the shop right now, on the whole shop. And I will keep that running as long as I am absolutely allowed to. And finally today, uh, the, the story that you've probably been waiting to hear about after I've rambled on about my own personal news. After starting a drug that's officially approved to treat a type of blood cancer, a young man with type 1 diabetes was able to stop using his insulin. With type 1 diabetes, he's not using insulin. He's been off insulin since August 2018. So that is... I mean, that's more than two years now, isn't it? So uh, Dr. Lisa Forbes is his doctor. She, now she stopped short of calling uh, this, this drug and its effects as a cure for type one diabetes. But she did say that the patient's diabetes appears to have been reversed and she hopes that it's gonna stay this way as long as he takes uh, the oral medication, which is called, let me get this right, Ruxolit, Tinib, Ruxolitinib, Ruxolitinib. Why do they have to make medicine so hard to pronounce? Anyway, it's in a class of medications known as JAK inhibitors, and I believe the sort of, uh, per, you know, the brand name for the drug is Jacafee. Now, whether this drug can help others with type 1 diabetes isn't yet currently known. The patient has a genetic mutation that Ruxolitinib is known to work on. 
And the doctor said that it's not clear if other people with type 1 diabetes also have this specific genetic mutation. At the age of 15, Forbes's patient had been experiencing chronic yeast infections of the skin, nails, mouth and throat, which is, can often happen in people with type 1 diabetes, chronic diarrhea, oral and rectal ulcers, recurrent sinus and lung infections and other autoimmune conditions called hypogammaglobulinemia. Do I deserve a round of applause for pronouncing that? It's probably a very serious situation, so we shouldn't be applauding it. Stop the applause, stop the applause. Now, at the age of 17, he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, but because he had multiple conditions, his doctors ordered a whole genome sequencing to see if they could pinpoint a root cause. They saw one particular genetic mutation and thought ruxolitinib might help. He started the drug nine months after being diagnosed with type one and the patient is currently in college and Dr. Forbes said he calls the drug a game changer because it's a pill. It's so easy to take and um, it honestly provides some potentially important information which could lead to better, easier treatments for type one diabetes. But as with many things like this, every story that we cover, every story, that we cover like this, more research is needed because ruxolitinib acts on the immune system. Patients have a higher risk of certain infections and their white blood cells, liver function and kidney function have to be checked every few months according to the doctor. Now, she isn't the only one excited about the potential of the JAK inhibitors in type 1 diabetes. JDRF has been funding research into JAK inhibitors for years and will soon start a clinical trial in Australia for people with newly diagnosed type 1 diabetes. And I mean, I've covered stories about them. We've heard a lot about islet cell transplants, stem cell therapy, but could a simple, well, I say simple, it's not simple, but could a cancer drug, something which we, a lot of us wouldn't consider would help us with type 1 diabetes. Give us the ability, the chance, the option to give up the pens and the pumps for good. Only research will tell us and that's why it is important to keep funding and fundraising those charities which do fund that research, JDRF and Diabetes UK. And that is it for this episode. Before I go, I just wanted to let you know that there is a brand new podcast episode out right now. I'm speaking to dietitian Ben Zeal. So do go and check that out if you want to find out more about how you can support the channel. There's more information in the description box below. But that's all from me today. See you next time. Bye-bye.